After uploading the video I made a few days ago regarding the Flat Earth Discovery in the movie Tao the Ming Hags that was released back in 2009, I was contacted by the producer, Joe Franz himself, and we had an exchange. Basically, it was an impromptu interview over Skype. And it wasn't just regarding the Flat Earth topic. It was also talked about the fake moon landings, the hoax moon landings as well. I'm sure many will have their own preconceived notions about Joe Franz since he basically has done work through the mainstream outlets, mainstream media, such as MTV, National Geographic, History Channel, Animal Planet Discovery. Sony, 3Net, True TV, Spike, Destination America, and so forth. So again, a lot of people are going to have their preconceived notion on what he's all about, but definitely do not judge a book by its cover. He has a lot of interesting things to say, and for a lot of truth seekers, it's going to be a very interesting listen. I first uh, heard about Russian vids uh, from his videos on YouTube. Um, I'm always... Uh, very interested in what is commonly referred to as conspiracy theory. Um, I'm I'm a type of person. I'm I'm into all kinds of stuff, and and I I'm not a big mainstream media guy. So I get I get a lot of it, it my information um, from the internet from alternative news sources. So that's that's one of the that's the first thing that turned me on to Russian vids. And lo and behold, I saw that he had made a video about me one day. And about this movie that I have produced called Ming Hags, which was directed by Bam Margera and starred a lot of the guys from the CKY slash Jackass crew. And the video snippet that he had drawn attention to depict was a scene that we had done for the film called Ming Hags, and it, it, it took place in a classroom, and the scene featured me playing the part of a teacher as a you know as a little cameo role which are fun to do and with uh, uh mark the bagger from the howard stern show and from the bloodhound gang and jimmy pop ali fame and all that stuff and so this was an independent film and it was financed out of bam margera's own pocket and um it was all shot on super 16 millimeter film and it was very expensive, and we were always looking for ways to offset costs. So we went around to all the local colleges, and we asked them um, if we could film the scene in one of their classrooms so that we didn't have to make some fake-looking classroom film set in one of our friends' houses or something like that. As I said, it was an independent film, low budget, but still very expensive when it's coming out of your friend's pocket. So we went to one of the schools who were willing to let us film there, and they were excited because it was an independent film and all this stuff. And we scouted the location, and it looked perfect. And out in the parking lot, um, there were uh, two gentlemen, um, very well spoken, you know, moderately dressed, um, you know, suit jackets, that kind of a thing. And they were asking us what we were filming because they saw some of the camera equipment and all that stuff. And we described to them what we were filming, and they said well, how much does it cost to film a scene like this? And I said, I, you know, it costs about $1,200 to, to, for, you know, covering the cost of the film and the actors and the extras and all that stuff. It was a relatively very small scene. And at first I thought they were the faculty of the college. So I was on my best behavior trying not to downplay. I was trying to downplay the fact that, you know, this is a, silly film as you put it in your video it's kind of for knuckleheads <laughs> and, and uh, i didn't take that as an insult because look at what jackass and this the various spin-offs are we're all a bunch of knuckleheads that's what we do it's, it's fun yeah you know and so um one of the guys said well what would you say if we paid for your day to, to film here and i said so you're going to give us twelve hundred dollars you know which I really appreciated, but I, I didn't know what they wanted in return. Maybe they wanted, I had thought maybe they wanted their kid to have a little cameo in the scene or something like that. And they said, and I said, well, what do you want in return for the money? Because nothing in the world is free. And they said, well, we want to um, help you art direct the room. So automatically I'm thinking, okay, the guy has a wife who maybe wants to be an art director or a designer and she wants to come make some little touches on the room. So I said, okay, you had a deal, you know, and 
being in show business, I've had larger offers for a lot stranger things than $1,200 for someone to be able to art direct the room. Um, so we came in to film. Um, I couldn't, I'm looking around the room and I'm like, well, there's nothing different about this room. I said, what did you, what did you do? And they pointed to the blackboard. They said, we just made some diagrams on the blackboard. Just make sure that shows up in one of your shots. Mm -hmm. And that's really all there was to, and, uh, and uh, to, for your listeners, the diagram was a picture of the earth as it appears on the United Nations flag next to a square. Now at the time, um, on YouTube and stuff, there was no flat earth theory to, yeah. to speak of. No one was really talking about it. And I had never heard, of course, I've in history class uh, and science class, we always heard that people used to believe that earth, earth was flat, but looking at that, the round earth on that, I didn't think that I didn't know that there was the flat earth theory, right? That wasn't a thing back then. So I didn't think anything of it until I saw your video. And I recalled the strange story of how that image came to be. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, you know, a lot of people might look at that scene and say, oh, Bam Margera is in, you know, in touch with the Illuminati and all that stuff. And it's, it's, it was nothing, anything like that, but it was very strange as to how these guys were willing to give, give us $1,200, which was our cost to film the scene, to have that image on the film. Mm -hmm. I find it very interesting, you know, like I mentioned in the video where it says Science 101 and what is depicted, you know, looks exactly like the Flat Earth model. So it's just, and then I connected it all with the other movies like Back to the Future, iRobot, you know, Catwoman. It's, you know, you see a pattern there. So, it, you know, if you're, what you're, I believe what you're saying is you're saying this is basically a coincidence in your situation, what is depicted on the chalkboard has nothing to do with well, the it, well, I've never seen these guys before that time and I never saw them since. Okay. And I don't know how they knew we were there, but I will say this, why, why would someone pay you $1,200 to have that image in a film? Right. And yeah. they knew the nature of the film because I told them what the scene was. So. Maybe there's maybe there's something to this. I, yeah. I, I don't I, I never thought about it till I saw your video. And then I thought of that very strange story. Who would pay someone that kind of money to have this image in a movie that they knew would uh, go out to you know, a, a demographic of people who don't really think about that type of imagery? Maybe they intended it to be some kind of subliminal message. I don't know. I, it's mm. it, it. It is very strange. So bottom line is when it, what it all comes down to is you had no no part of that whatsoever. It's just you know these people they you know it was out of your hands and it it was presented by people and you just filmed it as is with that background because the thing that really gets me it's not just a flat Earth model. It's you have the the square there as well and you know side by side. It's very elaborate how the chalkboard is. You know you have the square. And, it, you know, it's really well done. It's not like it was, you know, some work was put into it. You know, it wasn't just, you know, on, on a whim or something, you know. So it was definitely planned and for this presentation, for sure. And what What is the significance of the square in relation to the flat earth theory? Well, the whole thing is it's biblical where there's, you know, in the Bible, it states basically there's, you know, four corners of the earth. You know, like like in pro wrestling, Vince McMahon or Gorilla Monsoon was, would say the squared circle. So the concept of the flat earth where... You know how the sun revolves around the flat earth and you're going to make a, an ice ring basically with the circular motion of the sun and you know the sun that that circular you know the circle of the flat earth is within this within the square of the of the four corners that's that's a biblical reference i see what it, what it comes down to now i will say this this is very interesting now let's so let's let's really get into this um i don't necessarily i don't believe the earth is flat I don't believe it's round. I haven't, I've seen not enough evidence for either one. However, what makes the flat earth theory extremely interesting is um, I've been up in I don't, hundreds of airplane trips yeah. and I have never seen the curvature of the earth. Me either. Now, yeah. 
Um, and I've been over mountains, I've been over deserts, I've been over rainforests, I've been over oceans. I've never seen it. I've always expected one day to go high enough to see a curvature. I never have. So some people say, well, I've seen it in pictures. But you have to understand the way a lens works yeah. is if you use a wide angle lens, it will distort reality and there will be a curvature. For example, if you've used a GoPro and you've seen what you shoot through a GoPro lens, everything looks curved. Yeah, fisheye lens. lens. Yeah. Fish eye lens. So that's yeah. what a lot of people don't understand. Yeah. So, but I'm going to lay something on you. And if you're listening to this, and again, I want to don't I can't stress this enough. I don't believe the Earth is flat. I don't believe it's round. I I'm ambivalent either way. But here's what's interesting. Okay, so if you're listening to this, we you have seen, you have been to the ocean, and you have seen a sailboat. And here's how you know the Earth is round. You've seen a sailboat go out to the horizon. And slowly the sailboat sinks and the bottom disappears from view. And slowly the sail sinks down over the horizon so you can no longer see it. And that's your proof the Earth is round. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you've seen this, if you've seen that with your own eyes, you are brainwashed because you haven't seen it. Now, I want you to think about this. Look, you have to understand. The horizon is 26 miles away, okay? You cannot see for 26 miles. You might be able to see a mile away. You might be able to see two miles away. There's no way you're going to see an object, especially a sailboat, 26 miles away. Now, why do you think you've seen that? I want you to go to Google. And I want you to bring up Google Images and, and uh, Russian vids. You can add these images to this audio as you like. It might be very helpful for your viewers. Okay. But the images you'll see are diagrams of the sailboat going over the edge of the earth. And, the, and it slowly disappears. Now, you've seen this image in so many science books and in so many science documentaries. You think... You've seen it, but you haven't. So there's proof that anyone can be brainwashed in the most subliminal ways. So I think that is very interesting. Um, now, the question is, why would people lie about the Earth being round when it is flat? I, I, I made a video where these people were out, out in the ocean, and they had a, a Nikon P900 digital camera. And you saw, you could see the sun looking like it's beyond the horizon, and you only see basically, what is it, half of the of the sun, because it looks like it's a, around the so-called ball Earth. But they zoom in with this with this P900 digital camera, and all of a sudden, what do you see as they zoom in? You see the full sun, above, to, completely above the horizon. It's all about perspective, just like when you're looking at telephone poles when you're looking down the street, where they're, they're all the same height, but the one furthest away looks like the legs are missing but it's not it's just about perspective okay so yeah and that that is a very interesting point i mean um uh, optically when you zoom in with a lens or a digital zoom uh, you know you get a whole new perspective and you're right it is all about perspective but there is another theory about why people would lie about uh the earth being round Okay, so let it, let's take the current map of the Earth of, of the continents that we know about and that are already mapped that have been explored. Now you take those, and which is a flat map, and you wrap it around a globe. So now uh, anyone would feel confined to the globe, and now the... Uh, the idea that there's any other land now goes away because it's a way to hide other land. Now, the theory goes, and again, I don't necessarily believe this is true, but it is extremely interesting. The theory goes that if you no longer confine yourself to a globe where there is a limited amount of land and you keep traveling in all directions, there's more land. Now, there, the, the, the theory goes that there is, um, out of the range of the sun, there is a lot of ice. 
which collectively becomes Antarctica, right? Um, and but if you get beyond the ice, there are other suns and there are other moons and there are other land masses, and the land is infinite. It keeps going. There are more trees. There are more resources. There is more coal. There is more gold. There are more animals. Why would this be hidden from us? Well, if people realize there's other land to be settled, they would go there. And they would no longer be under the tight fist of a global government. Now, that is very interesting. Again, I don't believe it's true or not true, but it is very interesting to entertain. Um, I forget the fella's name who did the uh, the Antarctic expeditions. He said that he found trees. Admiral and Byrd. Coal. Sorry, Joe. That, is... Sorry, Joe. That's um, Admiral Byrd. Yes, Admiral yeah, Byrd. The, yeah, and his interviews are extremely interesting. He yeah. says the the amount of resources that he found just in Antarctica were incredible, and if you could find a way to sustain life and get through the cold, um, you could live there. And of course. He never made it too far, um, too far into the Antarctic. But the theory goes that if you get beyond all that ice, there's other suns and there's other life-sustaining systems and and other other land masses which could sustain life. And I think that's very interesting to think about, even if from just a science fiction perspective. Um, so that said, let's talk about one other thing which I find very interesting. Okay, so we've all heard people um, expound on their theories as to why it's impossible to get men on the moon and even more impossible to get them off the moon and return them to safety to the Earth. We've had people pick apart the videos for, uh, of the lunar landings, for example, the slow motion technique that's used. If you speed the video up 50%, they are now... Um, in the physical realm of uh, 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 of Earth, it looks exactly the same as someone jumping around on Earth. Um, now, again, I know there's gravitational differences, but but here's what's interesting: if you look at the gravity, if the gravity is less on the Moon, why do they move slower? Wouldn't they? Wouldn't you be able to move faster because your muscles are 50% more um, more effective? towards the low gravity? Yes. That, 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 that's interesting. Okay, but that's not neither here nor there. Because, uh, I don't know, there are physical properties on other planets and stuff which are immeasurable. I get that. But here's something that I'm going to tell you as a video guy. Here's why I believe that the uh, lunar landing was faked. Because there is no way you can have a power source that strong at that time in history and there's no way you can there's no way you could transmit that video signal all the way to earth absolutely 100% not let me tell you something i have just on my if i have a handheld video camera and i want and uh let's say i'm shooting a scene and the producer wants to see what i'm shooting so they have a transmitter in their hand and they have a battery on my camera the battery that i have is about the size of a brick it's more square but it's about the same mass as a brick and it only lasts for maybe an hour and a half. And that signal only goes a couple hundred feet. Now you're going to tell me that on that teeny little spaceship, with that teeny little camera, they're going to have enough power to transmit a full color video signal all the way down to Earth. And I can also tell you this, that the... Uh, when they promised a full color video signal, the uh, the station that broadcasted um, the lunar landing, they were pissed because they weren't getting raw video feed. What they were getting was called a kinescope. And for those of you who don't know what that is, that was an editing process used up until um, the late 1990s. And I've actually I've actually seen the kinescope technology and utilized it when I worked in a film lab. And it's very interesting. Um, basically, it's an editing tool. So you um, have a screen, basically it's a television screen, and you shoot that with a film camera. So now it's on 16 millimeter film. So what they did with those videos, in theory, 
why you see a black and white image of the lunar landing, although they claim the full color videos exist, was they, what NASA says they did was transmitted the full color video signal, filmed it on a kinescope, black and white on 16 millimeter film, and then released that to the networks. So therefore, it, it was not a, a live event because to get film process it takes hours and it takes it's it's a whole process that that generally takes about six hours uh to complete even with the most efficient film laboratories so why would they get this crappy grainy black and white film image when they could have broadcasted color which at the time the networks were pissed that they didn't have the ability to do that nasa denied them but anyway, that's neither, neither here nor there. The whole kinescope thing, that's a side note. My thing is there's no way, there is no way with that technology and with batteries being as big and as weak and as heavy as they were, you could have broadcast that signal from the moon. Impossible. Good info. Good info. One thing I want to mention, Joe, is uh, before discussing the moon, what I believe what the whole moon hoax was about, getting back to what you're saying about Admiral Byrd and exploring beyond the the ice ring having been up in hundreds of airplane trips and never seen the curvature of the earth uh -huh. and knowing that with the diagrams that we've been told with the 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 sailboat going over the horizon these images that we think we've seen this proof you know everyone has seen a distorted image taken with a bubble lens where we can see the curvature of the earth knowing that I have never seen this and the sailboat going over the horizon where the bottom of the boat disappears followed by the sail knowing that that's 26 miles away and physically impossible to see it makes me fascinated by the fact that there is no evidence that i can tell that the earth is indeed round and i i don't discount that it's round but i don't discount that it's flat um, that's but there's that's, no evidence. I'm sorry, Joe. There's no evidence besides what would they tell us in the indoctrination centers throughout this, you know, not only this country, the world. There's no evidence. Just like there's no evidence, we're supposedly spinning. Well, you're sitting in your chair right now. We're supposedly spinning. Well, at the equator, actually, at 1,100 miles an hour, while traveling supposedly through space, orbiting around the sun, at nearly 70,000 miles an hour. So we don't feel it. We don't sense it. Give us a reason to believe what they tell us. Well, the theory is that that since uh, centrifugal force, we're all moving at the same speed. That's why when we jump, you know, uh, the, the Earth, uh, uh, in the round Earth theory, the Earth is moving essentially a mile a second. So when we jump, we should land a mile away. But since the theory is that we are all glued to the same centrifugal force, so we, when we jump, we are spinning at the same rotation, which those laws of physics also apply when you're high in the air in an airplane, which doesn't make sense. I'll tell you, I'll tell you other things that don't really make sense that people blindly believe is black hole theory. Mm -hmm. No one's ever seen a black hole. Yeah. No, there's no proof that any of, of them exist. Um, and of course, the black hole is how you get the Big Bang. So uh, the theory is that. Um, uh, the lack of matter becomes so nothingness becomes so dense that it explodes and matter is created through the denseness of nothingness. That's essentially what a black hole is, yeah. which makes no How do you take – how is there nothing that becomes something out of denseness of nothingness? You know, you know I'm going to interrupt it's, you there, Joe. You know, I don't know if you see my video with the quotes from William Shatner. He's – said it several times. He was asked, what's the difference between science and science fiction? He says that they're both the same. How do you balance science with science fiction? They're both the same. The, the mystery of science fiction is what I'm talking about. Science and science fiction are essentially the same. Thank you very much. You know, he talked about having this conversation with Mishu, uh, Mishu Kaku and telling him they had, debate about the, they had a debate about this. He goes, how do you know this stuff? He goes, oh, it's in my head. That's what... He said that Mishu uh, Kaku told him, but but taking one step back, I, I'm sorry to, to 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 derail this, but real quick, when you talk about the how the atmosphere supposedly moves with the Earth as it spins, 
But what about satellites that are supposedly in the vacuum of space? How are they moving along with the so-called ball Earth as it's traveling at nearly 70,000 miles an hour? And we'll get back to your point about the black holes. I just want to ask you what your well, thoughts no, no, on that. No, 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 I, I agree with that 100%. And I'll give you something else. Um, uh, one time I was on Mount Fuji. Okay. And I was filming something there for a, some sports commercial I won't get into. But we end up in Japan on Mount Fuji. And it's not like it is in any other place in the world because you see, you know, shooting stars, meteors coming into the earth and bursting into flames once they enter the atmosphere. You see one of those about every seven seconds. Okay, so with the, the number of of meteors that big that we can actually see, how big are all these small little pebbles floating around in space? Why are the satellites never hit? Yeah. Why are the why are the space shuttles and anyone orbiting the Earth and any kind of spacecraft, why are they never hit by a tiny little pebble? Yeah. Uh, there's there's millions of these things entering our atmosphere and even more millions around us. Why are they never hit? That's very interesting. Well, uh, you know, I find it interesting. You mentioned space shuttles. I've made many videos on space shuttles being nothing more than airplanes. It's nothing more than a production where basically you have a, a rocket launch at Cape Canaveral. And basically these rockets just go into the ocean. And we never see, you know, these so-called, you know, these, these space shuttles actually physically going into space. All we say, they tell us, oh, it's going around the so-called ball Earth. But no one ever sees it. No one ever records the so-called space shuttles going into space. All we see is from the vantage point from Florida. But getting back to the whole point of how it's all basically like a Hollywood production, then you, out of nowhere, say weeks later or months later, you see the space shuttle coming back to Earth, and all you see is basically the space shuttle coming in for a landing just like an airplane. And they have the chaser planes coming in alongside, and that's to cover the fact that they have jet engines because supposedly these space shuttles disperse all their fuel on takeoff they have no jet fuel whatsoever, so they're coming in supposedly after dropping like a rock out of space, they come in for a landing. It's on a spinning ball. So it's completely ridiculous. Well, if you think that's crazy, I want anyone to, after you're done listening to this, go and look at NASA's videos that they put out in the 1980s of people cruising around on those space shuttles and everything with their their hair spray with this hairspray trying to make it look like it's no gravity and their hair is flying around it is so bad i have that it's I have... like they took the worst stylist in the world spray uh, you know put a hairspray all in their hair and tried to stick it up it just it, it looks so bad the production quality is and they tried so hard to make it look legitimate but it's entirely unbelievable in today's standards with how sophisticated the viewing audiences are. Let me tell you something, Joe, real quick. It's funny you mentioned that. Sorry to cut you off. But I actually uploaded a video recently where they're doing this, you know, supposed, you know, interview with someone, someone on Earth, a newscaster. And he says, are you guys really in space? You know, it looks too clear. Is this a hoax? And then there's, there's a female talking exactly what you just mentioned about the hair up. And it's completely, you can tell she's using, she's using Aquanet or whatever hairspray they have. And she's pointing at her hair, and it's completely ridiculous. And then the guy does a spin, proving he's supposed in outer space. And the guy next to him tugs on what looks like a wire. And they're basically just, what I believe, they're upside down, and they've got harnesses. But but I'm sorry to cut you off on that. I just want to mention that, that I actually, you just mentioned that, and I actually covered it just a couple of days ago in a previous video. Yeah, I mean, it's laughable what is you know tried to pass off as. And you know what what's so great now? Um, about YouTube and about these video platforms is, you know, back in the day, you got one shot to see this stuff on television, and that was it. I mean, you believed it was true. You saw it once. Maybe you saw it on a rerun. Maybe on the on the other news channel, they would rerun some of this footage. But now it's all been released, and people have the ability to look at it and to pick it apart and to really think about it. You know, like. We we talked earlier about the the lunar landing. Well, you know, now that people have the technology at their fingertips on their laptops to be able to speed up the lunar landing footage. Uh, you know, you have the Land Rover going around, and you have the guys hopping around in slow motion. Speed that up, 
200%, and it looks like they went out in the desert and filmed, you know, and, and even the little things where uh, the shadows. Okay, so in, in filmmaking, we have what's known as three-point lighting. You have three light sources illuminating an object. There are three shadows on those objects on the moon. You have three shadows going in three different directions. The only way you get that is if you have three light sources. It's not a, I've heard I've heard other filmmakers trying to bunk this say, "Well, it's it's really an optical illusion yeah. and reflections <laughs> off of objects on the moon." I said, "You know what? Have you ever filmed something with one light source and got three shadows?" <laughs> And Great they point. shut the hell up because they know I'm right. You can't get point. three point. shadows from one light source. It's mm. impossible. Yeah, and then they're gonna. Well, they'll probably just say, "Oh, there's mirrors on the moon." <laughs> that's the, that's the only. And of course, obviously they don't. But yeah, that's a great point. One thing I want to mention real quick. Russian Viz, what's your theory on? You, you mentioned earlier something about you, you had a theory on the uh, uh, about why you would fake a lunar landing. What now? Uh, now, uh, you know. I can think of a point where, you know, the Russians in 1957, October 4th, had Sputnik, and they had a satellite, and we had to outdo them by putting a man on the moon. I get that as uh, as a, a motivation as to why we would accelerate our space program and even go to the lengths of faking a lunar landing to outdo the Russians. But what is your theory? My theory is it's all about the ball earth it wasn't about going to the moon it was about getting a full supposed image of the ball earth it's a subconscious type of programming just like when you watch any type of documentary on tv history channel when they show for example when you had a uh one of these construction workers going up the uh the uh the trade tower and you see the so-called horizon all curved from the fish eye lens camera so while you're watching a documentary, your subconscious is being programmed by this false curve, creating the false reality. So again, getting back to the so-called ball earth, in all these years, we only have two supposed photos in all these years, going back to Apollo 17, back it was in 1973, and then back in 2015 with another supposed image or photo, supposed photo of the ball earth. And it just so happened to have sex on it when you flip over the so-called ball art, there's these, the uh, sex symbolism. Like I say, they're called the Illuminati for a reason. They're illuminated and they're naughty. And by the way, just for reference, I talk about my on my channel about the occult of 33, the highest degree in the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. It just so happens the, the record for uh, by astronauts to be on the moon, supposedly walking on the moon, is 33 hours. So you have always have the occultic numbers associated associated with all these all these hoaxes and saps such as, you know, hoax shootings and, and whatnot. Just like the Twin Towers, the construction of the Twin Towers started in 1968. They came down in 2001, exactly 33 years. The same year, 1968, was the same year that the 9-11 calling system, the universal calling system, went into play in Haleysville, Alabama. So it's all about the occult with everything, just like... Okay, no, wait, wait, here's, 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 where I, here's what I need to know. Yeah. Okay, so... I, I I can appreciate the uh, the symbolism through numbers. Yeah. Well, one thing I hate is I forget the guy's name, but he puts out these videos where all he does is the numbers and gets oh, so boring. But yeah. Had, no, but, but but here's what I want to know. Yeah. If um if these quote uh, conspiracies are encoded with these numbers, what is the point? Of why would people purposely Throw in these uh, the numbers, you know, the thirty-three. Yeah. The th like, what is what is? Why would they do this? Well, let, let me say this, and I, I'm glad you asked. You're talking about Zachary K. Hubbard, and he goes overboard. Like he 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 thinks that every single freaking play on a football field is scripted. Every every single player <laughs> is in the know, and he goes overboard. See, he's making the numbers look ridiculous, and I believe he's an agent. And he's there's truth in the numbers, but he brings to the point where it's completely ridiculous. There are numbers. You got your your 33s, your 44, and your 777. Just like, for example, uh, CNN. They're located on the 33rd parallel. The supposed UFO crash of Roswell was, you know, is on the 33rd parallel. So you have all these numbers associated with so many events. Just like Bill Clinton changes his name from Bill Blythe to get Clinton to get 33. 
Just like I made a video just today about Sirhan Sirhan, who supposedly assassinated Robert Kennedy. Sirhan is 33, so you get your dual 33s, and Robert's 33, so is Kennedy. So, you know, it's it's there are the 33s, but it's when people like Zach make videos, and, I, and I'll tell you right now, Zach is really good with the numbers, but he goes way too far, and he just basically discredits himself when he, he's called, you know, he, he goes way too far with it, and just, it makes it seem ridiculous with all these numbers he's putting together. It's like he's pulling them out of thin air, but there are, you are, you are going to have your numbers in there, but it's when you go overboard with it. When I make videos, I'll cover the numbers, but I'll show video footage to go along to prove my point when it comes to, say, a shooting hoax or a psyop, but I'm not going to just sit there for half an hour and just throw numbers at you and, oh, this guy's birthday was on this date and it connects with, with you know, with right. this date. It's just, it's just, it's just a bunch of, a uh, bunch of rubbish. But, but let's say, but let's say these Illuminati, uh, this global apparatus of Illuminati is, uh, I don't know, faking events or, uh, or, or, or whatever. Why would they purposefully put in numbers like 33 into like a parallel where uh, uh, an event took place or yeah. 33 minutes on the moon? Why? What is their purpose for that? It's their tra it's their, basically their signature. This is this is our like after a a painter is done painting his his portrait or picture, I should say, he's going to put his little signature on it. And it's, that's like just, a, it, it's like a director like Alfred Hitchcock having a cameo in his film is what you Yes, it's exactly. Uh, okay, so so I just want to get something clear um, that we talked about a little bit earlier. We got off track was when you uh, talked about people's motivation for faking a moon landing. Um, again, one of the theories is that we want to do outdo the Russians. Um, another reason is that uh, that I've heard is that we wanted to. Uh, the United States wanted to be able to tax our citizens a little bit more for NASA in order to kind of launder money for our government, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know what their, the motivation would have been if the lunar landings were a hoax. But you say that it is it was an underhanded way just to um, uh, facilitate this image of the ball earth so in other words a magician will do the trick in one hand while waving the other hand in front of your face so in other words we what, what you're saying is our motivation for faking moon landing was under the guise of beating the russians to the moon but really what we wanted to do was say that's what the Earth looks like from the moon. You yes. see, it's round in a subliminal way. Is that what you were saying? Absolutely, and also it needs to be understood as well as Russia and the U.S. The whole Cold War was a, a fake beef. These are all Masons. The world's a stage, and all these governments are one working together. And, and you know, okay, so you know what else is really interesting too is that you know for a hundred years we have learned that there are nine planets, right? And we have. Uh, they've left it to us to believe this wholeheartedly because scientists have told us there are nine planets. Now, a couple years back, I think three years ago or so, they tell us, by the way, there's no planet Pluto. What do you mean there's no planet <laughs> Pluto? I thought you said there was a planet Pluto. They say, well, we were never really sure what it was. Well, what are you saying? Is it a block of ice? What about it doesn't qualify as a planet? Is it a mass of gases? No, they no, it's not a mass of gas. Well, is it a block of ice? Well, no, it's not necessarily a block of ice. Well, what was it that you mistook for a planet? <laughs> We're not really sure. It could be nothing. No. Well, what? Is, what? Wait a minute. So there is n nothing that you mistook for a planet. That that really shook me up to the fact that these scientists that we are supposed to put all of our trust and faith in don't have any idea what the hell they're talking about. How, what about nothingness qualified as a planet? We're not sure what it is. You're not sure what what is. What was it that you mistook for a planet? Yes. We're not sure. It could be nothing. <laughs> what? It, it doesn't make any sense. That's why I don't put a lot of stock in 
what is presented to us as scientific truth. Um, again, with a the black hole theory, you know that there's a black hole because you can do a math problem. That's it. That's your evidence. Some yeah. guy sat and did a math problem. And because of the numbers, we know there's black holes. Yeah. Even though no one's ever seen one, even though there's not evidence that one ever existed, that doesn't make sense. I, you know, that's why I don't, again, hold a lot of stock in blind, uh, d uh, the blind acceptance of what is presented to us as truth. Science is religion, what it comes down to. You know, not questioning science, just, you know, that's what they say, so it must be true. Just like, like I said earlier with William Shatner saying, you know, science and science fiction, they're the same, you know. And this is the mockery where someone, you know, like Gene Roddenberry was a Mason and, and you know, William Shatner being in Hollywood for the longest time talking about, you know, it's, it's mockery saying someone that, you know, was part of this show where you go into different planets, different worlds, is saying science and science fiction are all the same. You know, it's, it's, they're going to give you truth when it comes to these entertainers, but the scientists are going to lie to you. So no one's going to take a, an actor, you know, like for all, all these, uh, entertainers coming out saying the earth is flat. It's true, but no one's going to take him seriously. George Carlin telling the absolute truth about the, the, the rig system, but who's going to believe him? Because, you know, he's just a comedian. So it's the world of opposites. We give you, I said it a million times, we're going to give you truth in movies and lies in the news. And that's what it all comes down to. Okay. So, you have an atheist, right? Your atheist will laugh at, let's say, a Christian or a Jewish guy or a Muslim. And your atheist will challenge the the religions by saying, ha, 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 you believe that there's an old man in the sky with a magic wand and a beard and he controls the universe and uh, he controls life and controls destiny. Ha ha ha, you're so primitive. Well, yet, the same guy will blindly, re will blindly believe a scientist just because uh, he uh, has submitted his intelligence to being inferior to that of a scientist. And what is a scientist? Okay, so someone who's religious, whether you're Jewish or you're Christian or you're Muslim, you essentially believe that God created the world and the universe, right? But what do you believe if you're an atheist and you've submitted to science? What you believe is that in the beginning there was nothing, which is what religions believe, in the beginning there was nothing, and then God, if you're religious, you believe that God created something out of nothing. Well, if you're an atheist, you believe that a black hole created something out of nothing. Like, if you're, if you're a scientist, an atheist. You literally believe that in the beginning there was nothing because matter doesn't come from nothing, right? Matter must have a um, some kind of measurable beginning. So your theory is that the nothingness became so dense in the form of a black hole that it blew up and became matter. That's what you believe? You believe that nothingness becomes so dense that it becomes matter and atoms? What? <laughs> what? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. That makes less sense than that there was a god that turned, uh, ma that created matter from nothingness. That actually makes less sense. So it's what I take away from all this, from our conversation, is that I think people should be less submissive and and you know approach science with more questions than beliefs you know let's scrap yes. this idea that these guys are smart they have the college degrees they know what they're talking about mm -hmm. i must agree with whatever they say or i will look like a fool well yeah maybe you'll look like less of a fool if you begin questioning of what we are led to believe is truth and in the end maybe you might learn nothing but maybe you might come out of it with a little bit more inquisitive mind which might help you in everyday life critical thinking yep your critical thinking and and that's a very valuable skill in dealing with things like your occupation and your job or or how you approach your work day and your relationships um, in all aspects of life, critical thinking is so important, and I think it's it's uh, an exercise of the mind 
that people um, don't take advantage of on a daily basis. Well said. Very well said. And, you know, one thing I want to mention, too, when it comes to the school textbooks, these teachers must teach directly from the school text textbooks if they agree with it or not. You know, and have any of these teachers that teach that we live on a ball earth, have they ever been in space, supposedly been in space and seen the ball earth? They're just going along with the program. They know what they, they, they know their job. And their job is to, you know, to teach out of the textbook. When it comes to the churches, which gets a little bit more complex, where they don't teach directly out of the Bible. They're going to skip through pages, give stories, and they don't tell the biblical truth, like where it states in Jeremiah 10 about the Christmas tree is being forbidden. You know, do not cut the tree from the from the forest and line it with silver and gold. What do the churches do? They teach their, you know, the, the congregation to do that. So you have the world of opposites. It's this mockery where people go to church and they're deceived. And you have people that go to school and they're deceived as well. And I talk about this in my videos as well. When you when you wear the graduation cap, you're wearing basically a mason's mortar, you know, and this basically all symbolizes how they're shaping and forming your mind. And you see a lot of celebrities, such as say Bill Cosby and Ben Affleck, and the list goes on and on. You see the photos, and they don't wear the flat mortar hat. That's for the indoctrinated masses. They wear the rounded hats, and you'll see that with Oprah Winfrey and Bono. The list goes on and on. It's for it's for the masses. You know, you're, it's basically when you graduate, it's basically stating you have been indoctrinated into our system of lies. And you're, now, now your job is to get a job after you get in debt with school, to get a job and then buy that house with the white picket fence, you know, get married and, you know, you just live your slave life working nine to five, like Al Bundy or one of these people you see on TV that you can relate to. That's why people love watching Al Bundy uh, marry with children because they can relate to him. You know, so that's the, that's the, the world we live in. This This is basically... A slave world run by those that are pulling the strings from behind the scenes. That's what it all comes down to. Well, uh, that was that was very poignant, and yeah, I I agree, and I think that you know whether whether you're an atheist, whether you're religious, whether you believe in a flat Earth or a ball Earth, whether you believe man has been in a space or 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 not, um, you know, again, critical thinking. That's what I take away from all this is, you know, you have to be your own person and you're never going to reach your foolish, your, your fullest intellectual potential by pointing at a religious figure and saying, this person knows everything by pointing at a scientist and say, this person knows everything. No one knows everything. We all have a lot to learn and please keep an open mind. Absolutely. I, I agree a hundred percent. And one thing I want to mention, too, is, again, when it comes to the churches, specifically the televangelist, is you'll see all the Masonic hand signs, just like all the politicians. That's why the churches are tax-exempt. They're basically, you know, this is this is what I, what I really want to mention. With all these events happening around the world, these televangelists don't speak upon them. So, again, that's how they control, you know, the people that watch the mainstream media, people that attend churches. This is how they control the entire matrix. Well said. And uh, Russian Vids, it was a pleasure to talk to you. And, um, you know, I, I appreciate um, the, uh, the, uh, the heart that you put into your work. I can tell that you're driven by passion and that I can very much appreciate. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate it. And, you know, some people might say, you know, some of these are a stretch. But when you, the further you go down the path of truth, the more you're going to see. You're going to sound crazy to people what it comes down to. It's like this. And I'm going to sum it up very briefly. It's like 9-11. Once you figure out 9-11 was not worth told. And other events, I'm not going to get into those events, but other events are not worth told. And then people watch, say, for example, other events on TV, but they believe them because they can't, the human mind can't say, well, everything can't be fake. That's their, that's their initial reaction. So, you know, they, they cannot go, they, they cannot go there because it's too insane, too crazy. But we live in a crazy world. And I play that, the lyrics from that song from Madonna when she, from that one song called American Life when she says, you know, I'm living out the American dream and I just realize that nothing is as it seems and it's very true. Again, I talk about truth and entertainment lies in the news and that's that's this world of, that's Freemasonry, the world of opposites, the world of duality.